Hey guys, all right, well, today we're going to work on the 85 Corvette. I'm going to try to bring the front end down a little bit. Um, at the end of the spring, there's a rubber pad that is about three quarters of an inch thick. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the wheels off, get the thing in here, pull the wheels off, and see what I can do about either removing that pad and putting in another piece of rubber in or cutting it as I've read about and bring this thing down you got I got a tape measure here got about two and seven eighths inches between the tire and the under lip of the uh, hood here the fender and it would be nice to bring that down a couple inches. So I'm going to show you guys how we're going to go about it. So the first thing we got to do is get it up in the air, get the wheels off, and we'll take a look at some things. All right, here we go. Okay, so we got it up in the air. First thing, we'll rattle the wheels off. And of course, I need another battery. Okay, got a good battery in the cordless impact now. So, I'm going to go ahead and <coughs> turn the wheels so that I can remove the tie rod end. I got to unbolt the sway bar, the shock, and the metal plate that goes over the top of the control arm as well so that I can separate the lower ball joint to get access to the spring. So, I'm going to move you guys so you can see better and get ready to do this. Okay guys, well, so hopefully you can get a picture here of everything, but let's take this uh, tie rod end off here first and I forgot to grab a pair of pliers hold on okay I'm back so I just got a full 3 drive metric set metric wrench set from 10 millimeter to 21 millimeter a pair of wire cutters a ball peen hammer and a pry bar and a flashlight to do this so there's no reason to pull the brakes apart because you're going to swing this whole assembly out of the way anyway because you're going to be accessing inside of the lower control arm so all this the shock and the sway bar the sway bar bracket over this thing has to come off so and then this plate comes off so that you can access the spring and I think that's about it. So we'll get started here. First thing we gotta do is pull some cotter pins. I try to get my light to shine. So I got the cotter pin right here. My fingers are cold. Started out there. Oop, come on. Come on. Okay. 
Okay, that cutter pins out. And I believe that's a 17. No. It's an 18. Okay. Take this nut off. I'm gonna go grab a rubber mallet. Now, you can use a pickle fork in here. I need to find mine, but I've also had good luck with rubber mallet. Or not. Okay, so I gotta go find the pickle fork. Yep, I ain't gonna pop loose. Sometimes you get lucky. And I don't, because you don't really want to use metal on here because you'll screw up the threads. So, all right, let me go hunt down a pickle fork, guys. Okay, so I found the pickle fork. It's actually my attachment for my uh, air hammer. I don't feel like listening to the compressor. All right, just to get it in there. And then bump it off there. Okay. There's your washer and your nut. Swing that out the way. Next thing is the two shock bolts. And I'm just gonna pop, break them loose for the time being. Because I want to take the sway bar loose first. That looks like a fifteen. And I need a wrench. Take the swimmer cross bolt out. It's got a lock nut on there, so I'll make sure. Right bolt gets back in the right hole. And that 
that bolt out. Let's use a pry bar, push it out. Okay, the sway bar is now loose. Pop it loose from its funky bracket there. And now I'm going to take Oh, I think I'll take the shock loose now. Sockets back to 13. When I pull this loose, the control arm is going to drop. Just a little bit. The shock is what actually controls the little downward movement. Okay, getting there. Okay, so I'm going to stick my bar in here. I'm just going to hold a little bit of pressure while I pull these shock bolts out. There it goes. One. Okay, so that just released all the pressure off the shock. Get these bolts out of the way. And probably we'll take the upper shock bolt off now. The nut that holds the shock on. Oops, 14. Because oh, it's 15, it will give me that much more room to get in here to oh, of course it's gonna turn on me. Okay, so not working. So I think we're going to leave that. I don't really want to have to pull that all the way off. I think the next thing we'll pull this sway bar bracket loose. There's two nuts that hold it to the A-arm. appear to be 
13s. Oh, of course. Okay. There's my. Okay, so those bolts are through this metal plate. So, you have to take this whole metal plate loose. There's one, two, three bolts. So we'll go ahead and take that loose. There's nuts on everything, so. Double, use double wrenches. Can't pull out all the way because it's touching the spring. But you can get it out of the way now. We'll turn our rotor out of the way because there's a bolt on the other side that you can easily get to. The flashlight set up here. can't see it but there's only three bolts to hold this plate on so pretty straight forward to figure out all right so that's the third bolt now I'll turn the rotor out of the way again this whole plate just lifts right out and set it off to the side Move you guys here so you can see what we're looking at. Now we got to get in here to the spring because there's a rubber pad there that we're going to cut down. So the next thing is pull the cotter pin, loosen up our ball joint here, and separate it. And which I'll have to get a jack to put underneath here keep the uh, right here keep the control on it from dropping down so we're gonna loosen all this up first thing I do is pull the cotter pin well, again with the cutters bending out I'm going to turn it again because I can access the other end of the cotter pin from the other side and pull it right out. There's the cotter pin. Turn the rotor back. And see how off I am. Oh, look at that 21. That was the biggest wrench I grabbed. Okay. 
And you're not going to want to take this off all the way. I'm going to loosen it up some. So that the threaded portion just at the bottom of your grooves on your castle net here. And that'll safely leave you enough room. And then... Let's see here. Check something. Okay. So I can move this enough so I don't I'm gonna pop it loose with the ball joint pickle fork here. Position here. Sometimes you got a whale on these things. Oop. Not wanting to move. Yeah, and I can't make it move that way. So I got a better situated here. I'll move you guys again. Okay, everybody can see. Okay. I'm back in with my pickle fork. Nope. Just not fitting in there. Okay, it's big enough. Sometimes get a boot full of grease here. You gotta try to squeeze some of the grease out. Which I'm managing to get. Okay. Don't believe my pickle fork's big enough. Nope, well, it's not. So, I want to try one more thing here. Let me grab a big drift and I'll show you guys another trick. Okay, so I went and got my big brass drift. The reason I want to use brass is because I'm going to place it on top of this nut after I run it down a hair and give a wrap straight down on it this way the brass will deform before the steel does I'm just going to use a heavy hammer Okay. Uh, I like a 
it might be moving a little bit. We'll try it again here. Oops. Nope. Okay, well, I'm going to have to come up with a bigger pickle fork, folks, so stay tuned for part two. Thank you for watching. Hey, guys. Well, today on Greasy Paws Garage, C4 Corvette lowering the front. Of course, I'm Greasy Paws. So, they sell some wedges and some things to lower these C4s in the front. Uh, the better way, or, or not say better, but a simpler way would be to just order and put coilovers on this thing. But, you know, you're talking a couple thousand dollars for fronts and rears. And... That's just a lot of money to spend on this car, so that's not really in the budget. So I'm going to pull this thing apart. We're going to take the spring out, cut down the rubber buff bumpers on it, and remove the rubber bumpers from the lower control arms. I have a new material that I'm going to cut out and make a pad out of that I'll show you guys. And we'll see how low I can get this thing now. I did take a measurement between the top of the tire and the bottom edge of the fender before I started. That was two and seven eighths inches. And uh, we want to talk, tuck this thing down over the tires as much as possible. As inexpensively as possible. So for those of you wanting to know how to do this, keep watching and I'll show you how. So first thing you're going to want to do now one thing I should say up front, you don't have to undo the upper ball joint. I'm undoing them because I can show you better and I've got the time it gives me a little more space to work. So that's optional if you choose to, other, otherwise you can just hold the disassembly and the caliper rotor all this out of the way to get the spring out. Um, now I have this on a lift, I'm about three feet off the ground so I have plenty of room for the arch of the spring. Um, but, but, so anyway, you're going to want to disconnect the lower ball joint, the uh, tie rod end, the sway bar, and the shock, and the upper ball joint. So I'm going to start with the upper, I'm going to pull all the cutter pins on the upper ball joint, the tie rod end, and the lower ball joint. And I just use a, a pair of side cutters to bend them out. Give them a little bend and twist here. Sometimes they've been in there a little while, they can be a little stubborn. Just lightly tap it start on it. Now, it's nice it's in the air. I can just turn everything by hand. Get a hold of this cutter pin. There's one. That's the hardest one to get out, so... This one off. There's that one. And I recommend when you go back together, use new 
new cotter pins. Turn this again. There's the third one. So, next thing I want to do here is remove the tie rod end. And that is an 18 millimeter. Now, I've said this in some other videos, I'll say it here. I don't give the, the threaded part of the bolt diameter, I give the size of the wrench you need in my videos, just to be specific. So 18 millimeter wrench. And you can just go ahead and take this nut all the way off. Set it out the way. And your, and your upper ball joint is also 18 millimeter. So you run these off. This the ball joints you just loose them off till about half the the stud is in the nut, so that you can when you pop the ball joint loose, nothing flies apart. Okay. Now the lower ball joint is. Twenty one millimeter. Loosen that up. Grab our pickle fork, a uh, tie rod end remover, or ball joint remover. First one I'm going to do this is the upper, and I want to carefully stick it in there so I don't rip the boot. My big hammer, I use a three pounder. It popped. The same thing on my tight rod end. That come right loose. I can just swing that out of the way. And I can go in here with my lower ball joint. Same thing, squeeze the grease out of the boot, get it in there so you don't tear it. You stubborn bugger. Okay, that one finally popped. So take take your ball joint tool out. I take a little short pry bar. I just want to put a little bit of downward pressure on the upper A arm. You can see it moving there. And remove that nut. Set it out the way. Okay, so run that nut off. Set it out of the way. There's a washer on there too. And then lift right off your uh, ball joint, your upper ball joint there. I like to wipe this grease out. Now you don't want to beat on these at all. Everything in here is aluminum. We'll take our bottom nut off. Okay. There's that. And... 
Okay, I gotta grab a couple of zip ties. So I just use some big zip ties. Lift this off. And I'll take a zip tie and I'll go through the upper ball joint hole. And I just go around the bracket that holds the brake line. And all you're doing there is just keeping weight off the uh, brake hose. I drop the washer. So, anyway, that holds that out of the way. The next thing I want to do, undo my sway bar. Okay, so that is, uh, I believe, Okay, so need two wrenches. Oh, I can't reach. Okay, where's mother 15 here? I don't know. Oh, I thought I had two 15 wrenches, so doesn't matter. We'll just get a socket out. Give it a little tap. Slide right out. Okay. So we bars off. I it up out of the way. It just rotates up in the bushings. And the next thing to do is uh, take loose the shock. Now, put a, you can get a bar in there and hold some of the tension because it's got spring pressure against it. But if you just take and you put a floor jack under it. Remove the shock bolts. Bar back in there. Okay, there's one. 
there's the other. Kind of scary because it pops, but it just goes two inches. Take the shock bolts off. Again, other shocks out of the way. Our shock tests out good. So, next thing is you have this plate that is the sway bar and shock mount, and you want to take it off. So, don't need a whole lot for that, other than a couple of 13s. Use a wrench and a socket. And there's a cross one back here. You can only get the nut off until you push the control arm down out of the spring. And then you can slide that one by too. off. And set it aside. Now take the bar and push the control arm down out of the way. And then you can pull that, that other bolt through. And there's your spring. I'll give you guys a better view. Okay, here's the end of the spring. Now this pad, once I have the spring out, I'm going to remove these. So that's how you take all this whole assembly loose. Um, the next thing is in the center of this two mounts. So I'll go ahead and get everything set up. We'll move underneath and I'll show you guys how to take that apart. Okay guys, so up in here, well it's hard to see, there's a uh, U-shaped bracket. There's a bolt on each side, they go up through this cross member. You have to take those loose. Now, here on the end, over here is this shield. It's got four bolts in it. You need to take that off as well. There's two on the outside and two here on the bottom. Pull that loose as well on both sides. Now. I've already gone through and pulled the other spindle and everything off of the driver's side of the car. We started on the passenger side. So the driver's side is done. So I'm going to go ahead and get this guard off and uh, off of both sides. And the bolts for it. 13 millimeter. Okay. 
Okay, there's one. Okay. I know it's hard to see, guys. You go to doing yours, and you'll see what I'm talking about. a bunch of videos on this and read every article I can find and none of them show pulling this this protective plate off but it sticks up I think it'll give you a little bit more working room especially if you're working underneath your Corvette in your driveway unfortunate to be on a lift maybe you guys can see that a little better to start off there's one okay so three or four I think these are more or less just a plate to protect the spring from getting hit by anything because it is made of fiberglass okay and that's the plate I'm talking about. Just set it out of the way. And that gives a lot more access. You can see the bracket there now. That gives a lot more access to the spring. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the bra that same protective cover off the other side. And then we'll get to taking these u-bolts out and slide the spring out okay guys so I'm still taking the uh, move you over here the mount loose here I know it's hard to see that mount right there there's two bolts one of the bolts you have to stick a wrench on the top the other one feels like it just stays in place. You may have to open the hood to get to the other end of it. I don't know. I'm having good luck with it, so. There you go. The lights are going down here. Might be able to stick your hand in. Ah. And stop it from turning like I can. get these out we'll come back okay guys so I went with cordless impact and was able to spin it well there's just two nuts take those off and work that bracket down out of there 
bracket comes out. There's your bracket. Set that aside. Okay, so there's one, one more side to do. We'll get that loose and get the spring on out of here. I'm going to move the camera. Okay, there's one. Let me get this other one. Stick a wrench or something in there. And get in there. All you gotta do is put that bracket and a little bit of pressure on it and then zap that bolt with the impact almost off. <laughs> I want my socket too. Now you can, with an assistant, open the hood and uh, almost uh, almost get it too. Okay, so put an impact on here again. Almost. Take a pry bar. There it goes. Okay. You gotta kind of fiddle with it. Let's the other nut. I'm gonna take that U bracket out. And I can feel there's big shims in there. Yep. On each side, there's these shims that go between the frame and the spring. Set those out of the way. There's enough room to get them out. Here's the other one. Those are coming from the top side of the spring. They, they go on the same bolts that those U-bolts go on. Okay. Here's a protective plate that sits uh, it sits between the spring and those that, that plate. You can see kind of the shape of it. And I'll show all these pieces laid out on the floor. Okay, there's that. I think that's it. You just take the spring out. One way or the other. If you actually push the control arm up out of your way, it gives you enough room. And you can walk the spring pretty well side to side. And you the car about three feet in the air. And I need to go higher.
Okay, now we'll go higher. Okay, that should be good. Okay guys, here's the spring. And you just gotta work it out. From inside the car there. And I gotta go higher on my lift. Now the spring's all the way out. Okay, so I'm gonna lay everything out and show you guys some parts. Okay, guys, so show you some parts here. There's the brackets that hold the spring in. This is the underside of the spring. I've already taken that pad off. This is a plate. So this goes on the top side then this plate goes on up against the frame this is that bracket that's on the end that you take off to get more access so that's how you get it out I'll do a part two well actually there'll be three parts to this there's some work we got to do to all these rubbers and cutting some end pieces and everything so you'll see the rest of the video thanks for watching guys hope this helps